call meeting order at 5 30. Um, to start off with, let's take a look. We've got some minutes to go through um, from the last couple of meetings, but it shouldn't take us um, too long. Um, is there a motion to accept the minutes from the January 9th meeting? Second. Her motion of Cindy second. Discussion? Discussion? Okay, hearing none. All in favor of um, approving the January 9th minute, please raise your right hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, it's unanimous. Uh, now let's move on to the minutes from um, 111. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from January 11th? So moved. Herb? Second. Dennis, second. Discussion on the minutes from January 11th? No? Okay. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes from January 11th, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? None? Okay, it's a uh, uh, unanimous set of proof. And then we have the minutes from the 17th, which are in front of you. Thank you for these, Tracy. Yep. Has everybody had a chance to uh, see these? Everybody's comfortable with them? Okay. Um, is there a motion to accept the. Uh, there, are, there are a couple of things. In here, um, Terry Howard may have spelled it correctly. What line is that? Uh, it, anytime you, it, well, it's, I think it starts on tab 11. Tara's name is spelled T A R A. Okay, I'll fix that. And then, um, I'll, uh, I'll read through it and fix your name anywhere it shows. Sure, and then on line, um, on line 24, you said parks and patriotic. Um, oh, excuse me, line 26 or 25 into 26, there was a new expense added under parks and patriotic for the new soccer goals. So it's not, it wasn't added under um, parks and patriotic, it was added under. Oh, I'm correct. You're right, that is the way it's. Title. That sounds weird. Okay, never mind. Okay. Um, anything further on the minutes from January 17th? That's the first one. Blue. Right. Fair brother. Right. Bri Brianna Fair brother. She was sitting oh, with Sarah. Yeah. But it's Brianna. It is Brianna, right? It's a right. Yeah, we should probably have. I thought that was right. How do you spell her name? I can't hear you. Just add A N A to Brian. Brian. R I A N N. Oh, N N? N N A, yes. Okay. It, when I'm doing minutes, just make sure you're, only one person is talking at a time because I can't hear all from all the background noise. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion on the minutes? Okay. All in favor of approving the amended January 17th minutes, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Abstain? None. Okay. The minutes from January 17th are approved. That ends that. So now I think we will go into the ledger. 22. 22. 22. So we're in the library, so everybody kind of keep the noise down, right? So. Not a quiet library. <laughs> uh, let's see, and Al has joined us, and uh, we have Sean and David Tommaso have also joined us in on Zoom. Hello. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Very good. I think you know everybody, and I think everybody. I hope so. 
I have a question before we get started. Library, this was handed out. Is this a revised budget? Uh, it is a revised budget. Yes. Oh. This was handed out. Yes, yes, you should have copies of the updated budget right in front of you. The date on it is one nineteen. You want to walk down through it? I would, I would love to give you a little background about the library. Mm -hmm. Anybody doesn't know. Um, it's been serving the community for 118 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Both residents and visitors. It's open 54 hours a week, which includes evenings and weekends. Uh, free, safe, welcoming resource for the town. Everyone should be proud of it. Yes. We offer free programs, provide space for groups to meet, such as book clubs, language clubs, knitting groups, children's authors, summer reading program. And just recently we signed up with uh, the volunteer income tax assistance program to offer um, people to come in and get the taxes done quickly at the library. Great. So that's something, a, a new thing that we, we just saw. Right. We collaborate with other departments, organizations, and also the Mosswa Public Library. Our budget from year to year stays pretty unchanged with the exception of contracted services, utilities, and wages, most of which are out of control. So um, this is mainly because 20 years ago, we had a, a group home by the, called the Friends of the Li Winton Library. They, act, they actually have been here for 20 years and su support the library in many ways. They donate about $5,000 a year to offset our budget by um, providing programming and um, resources such as the downloadable books service that we offer and um, the museum passes that we give out to their, their patrons. So they're, they're a really good resource that they've enabled for us to keep a budget, a budget down. They, are, they actually are um, hosting a puzzle competition, which is a jigsaw puzzle competition on Sunday. Um, it, everybody's going to get the same 500 piece puzzle, and whoever finishes first wins $200. Ooh, and that's important by the time. So, if you haven't driven, if you've driven by the library, you've seen beautiful gardens. The gazebo is well maintained. Mm -hmm. That's all taken care of by the friends of the library that offsets that, that budget for us. Did, did you say museum passes? Yes. And, and which museum? Curtin Museum, Squam Lakes, and Castle in the Clouds for this year, anyway. Okay. They're not free, but they're discounted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so, mm -hmm. so, this all adds to a beautiful library. We have visitors that come in that are on vacation. They make it a point to stop in the local library every, every place that they go, you know, and they're, they're very impressed with what we, we have to offer. So, I just wanted you guys to know what we do. And why we're here tonight. Yep. Thank you. And I, I think most of us have been here, we know very well. Okay. We do it well. Um, usually there's a different award a year. Did you, did you nail anything this year? No, no, no. No? Oh, okay, that's all right. We've got somebody else. Understood. <laughs> Understood. It's a very, it's a very, very good yeah. resource facility mm -hmm. of the town. So um, I want to go through the budget, but can we? Wait for the wages at, to the end to discuss those. Right. Okay. So we'll just go down the the line. Okay. Um, print materials. Um, we removed our reference line and added to the books, so not changing the bottom line. Um, our reference materials weren't being used, and most of everything you can access on the on the computer and the internet now. So we we did away with that. We didn't use all our budget this year because we received two um, grants, one from 
the CLIP grant, which we co-sponsored with Linwood Public Schools, and we received $500 worth of children's books. And then another grant that I wrote is um, the Pilpro Foundation, and it's a two-to-one matching grant for $1,200 worth of children's and youth books. So the um, the friends um, donated the $400 as the match for those. So we just received the $1,200 worth of books. It's about 80 new books that we have to put into the collection. So that, that offset the budget as well. Um, if we go down to um, telephone, that's that hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. um, employee training expenses has changed, and that's because every other year we um, put it to the budget for me to be able to go to um, the Public Library Association Conference, and this year it's in Columbus, Ohio. So that's an every other year um, expense that we do put in there. Maintenance, the same. Speakers and programs, that hasn't changed either because friends actually help us significantly with speakers and programs. Mm -hmm. uh, contractor services went up because of our community contract. So we weren't able to do anything about that. It's really hard to get um, cleaners and they do a really good job for us. They're actually going to offer us a in addition to the user contract, every every quarter a deep clean, which they would come in on a Saturday or a Sunday and do extra stuff, which will not be charged as part of the part of the survey. Mike, yes, sir. So I'm saying that the trustees recommended twenty two thousand one hundred, and the board of selectmen are only recommended nineteen five. So this is the reason for the change, the reason for the revised budget when the selectmen met met and voted on all of the budgets. Uh, Carol did not have a revised number for the cleaning. Right. Um, so when the selectmen voted to give this to the budget committee, all we had was the 19.5. And then Carol informed me last week that she received a new contract for the cleaning that doesn't kick in until March, I believe. And they're upping it to the 21 one. And the selectmen just haven't met yet to revise their budget number. Oh, so this new one I just got will be revised up to the. I mean, if the board seats fit, yes, seat but fit. It, will, it will go to the board to begin the budget change. Okay. Thank you. Karina, I only have the old numbers, uh, so can I pick that up tomorrow? Absolutely. I'll email that to you too if you'd like. Thank you. Yeah. So the, the next line was the electricity, which we took out. $4,300 realizing that we didn't use nearly as much as we had anticipated. Um, the previous year we put in extra because they didn't know what the electricity was going to be like. If I, so, if I may, are you on the same contract as the town? Yes. Okay. Um, propane, that didn't change. Materials and supplies, that didn't change. In the um in the serials, um, we actually reduced the number of magazines that we have for the subscription because they just weren't being used. We try to I try to pick top ten um ones that people actually bother to read and, and pick up and stuff like that. So uh, audio video we reduced that budget too because people are not coming in and borrowing <laughs> movies anymore like they used to. They all have streaming services or you know those types of things. So we do have a little bit of money in there so that we can purchase like nonfiction documentaries and such like that that people might might be interested in that they wouldn't be able to get. We we will. Does anybody have any questions on anything? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. So um, I have a letter from one of my trustees who just left for Florida. Who would like me to read it to? Who was that? Um, Pat Serabian. Okay. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Pat Serabian. I live in North Lincoln on Liberty Road. I'm currently serving on the board of directors of the library. I asked to fill in this vacancy last year by Carol. I was honored to be asked to accept. 
my name will be on the ballot to officially run for the position in March. For the past two years, I volunteered at the library on Thursday mornings to read to the kids during story time. Once the reading is finished, Keisha Camargo, the youth service librarian, has an activity or a craft planned for the kids. They really enjoy this part of the morning. Keisha has great ideas for crafts and activities. She's very creative. She gathers supplies and materials for these crafts on her own time. Also, she has coordinated many programs for school-age kids in the community, both during the school year and during the summer. To name just a few, she plans and organizes the Polar Express Party, Gingerbread House Competition, and many other things. She truly promotes a love of reading and the library is one of the people of Lincoln. In addition, Tisha is available in the library during meetings in the evening to assist with audio, video, um, and Zoom technology, because she's my tech. Uh, I have to relate to her on a regular basis. So over the past two years, I've been observed the dedication and enthusiasm in which Tisha carries out her duties as youth service librarian. I've also observed the dedicated and competent director of our library, Carol Riley. Carol executes her duties as director of this wonderful community gem with courtesy, accommodating, and efficiency. Carol oversees so many, so much as director as a library, such as to require books for, uh, from other libraries to fill requests from residents. Maintains a calendar of those who use the meeting room for meetings, activities, and more. Carol also goes above and beyond for the monthly book review club held at the library, for which I have participated in. She does some research, finds videos with interviews with authors and background information for stories we read. This effort by Carol greatly enhances the experience of our book reviews. Carol works so well with the board of directors of Friends of the Library and other groups and people in town. She personally is an asset. Finally, the three young adults, well, two young adults and one not young adult, who work part-time are very reliable in their work as the library helps to keep it open for extended hours to benefit our students, residents. I, along with the other board of directors, understand that the library employ the town employees will begin a 4% wage increase, but because our five-star library is such important, and perhaps a somewhat overlooked asset in the town for the above cited assets that are the library staff. I respectfully ask for you your kind consideration and to approve a 6% wage increase for all of them. Thank you very much for your time. Pass it here. I don't know if you guys want that. So, as you all know, um, employee. The employee pool is diminishing in the area, and it's very difficult to find employees. The, ma the majority of our staff are underpaid in relationship to the current market and wages. 4%, while nice, is just not enough to pay for the increase we all see in our daily lives, food, gas, lodging. Our staff are dedicated, trustworthy, responsible members of the library, many working for the library for several years, if not decades who come to work and serve the community with grace. Most not getting time off or vacation so that they miss a day's pay if they have to take some personal time. Um, if we were to try to replace these people, we wouldn't be able to place them, replace them at the current rate of pay that's being offered. So I feel strongly about this and I want to get what they would deserve. Sorry. First of all, thank you for what you do, Carol. Um, it appears that the differential between what the selectmen are recommending and what the library trustees are recommending is about $2,400. No, no, no. Okay. Um, so that does not seem to be a significant you know, expense in the budget. And I, you know, I also noticed that the, that the library trustees and the librarian last year were you know, careful in not spending their entire budget. Um, I do recognize that when boards are set a certain rate for pay increases that it it's advantageous and prudent to try to 
not force that, but to keep that across all cost areas. Uh, I just maybe suggest to the committee that we take a good look at the circumstances that Carol is up against. I mean, because the dollar amount is not extremely significant that maybe we look at it from a different set of eyes versus just because it's 4% in other areas that it should be a 4% everywhere. That's just something I'd like to everybody to consider. Other discussion? Uh, the employees get the same benefits as the other town employees? The full-time people do, the other ones don't. The part-times don't get any benefits. But no part-time employees get any benefits. So they are, they are in that. But the same tank rack, right? Or in place also part time. Right. And I don't want to speak for the board, but I think Carol Carol summarized it well that the board was not comfortable giving it a, a greater raise for one department versus all the other departments. And we discussed it. Uh, and I think the, the board was hoping that if there were individuals that needed an increase individually, that we could look at them as a comparative rate. And it is a small amount of money, as you know, like Brian said, it's $2,400. But I think the board was hoping that if there were, rather than making it a percentage increase across the board for every library employee, that we looked at each individual library employee and their wages and adjusted, it may be more than the 4%, it may be more than the 6%, but look at them individually rather than collectively. Thank you. The town doesn't have any merit based pay system currently. We don't. They used to at one time. They did. Before one. my time, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is, a there is no, yeah, you don't time. have a step. I mean, the PD does. The PD has a, a step increase, uh, you know, a grade scale, but uh, non union employees do. What was the grade last year increase for my uh last year we did six i think we did six percent across the board um if, I, if i'm not mistaken i'm pretty sure we did six percent across the board last year well yeah i think that the library serves a great purpose for the whole community but i also think that it's to put the selectman and the town manager in, in a position when we had a department head come in and ask for more for races than all the other employees are getting within the whole town. It's tough. I mean, I, I know that the trustees are a are different different uh, group and they have their ability just like I think maybe the uh, cemetery trustees could do the same thing. Right. But they didn't, they didn't go any higher than that. Um, I, I know it's tough for everybody to get employees. Get good, good employees that are going to stay. And I'm sure the fire department's the same way. Everybody, police department. I mean, everyone's having a hard time getting employees. It's just they're just not there. But I think if we're going to, when you look at the payroll portion of it, I personally think that you have to keep it within what you're paying other employees within the town, so that you cannot sit in line against that. How can they get six? We only get four. I mean, and I think that's that's a tough show for the town. Mm -hmm all the other employees that, that work for the town. And just so everyone's clear too though, the budget that the budget committee votes on, if you do vote on the lesser of the two values, Carol and the trustees could still then choose to give those employees the six percent. They would just have to find the money elsewhere. I understand. Mm -hmm. Just because it is the trustee thing versus the you know they're yeah. governed by the trustees, not necessarily the town manager. That's why there's both. When, like um, as many of you know, I am also a library trustee of that uh, group here. Uh, I just want to point out a couple <coughs> of things here on this. Carol has been in her job as director of our library for 25 years. And so she has influenced what we have. It's been her creation with her staff. Um, the building that we have for the library is valued at about $3 million. That would be replacement cost assessment. And Carol right now has about 15,000 books. So the town has a sizable investment 
in that building. And the trustees and particularly Carol, who runs everything on a day by day basis, has responsibility for a $3 million building and all of those folks and everything. And I just want to point, point that out. Um, Is there, a, so there's no merit based pay raises. Are there longevity pay raises? So the only thing that's out of no, sir. is cost of living. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's also governed by, as Karina just said, they can give one higher than the other. Yes. The library. It's, it's not just the cost of living, it's, a, it's whatever the select can decide they want to give. As an annual pay. As an annual pay raise. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with what cost of living is. Correct. Well, that's that's not true. Yeah. I think we. You're right. You're right. I, I shouldn't have phrased it that way, but it's historically it, in it follows the Social Security Administration's COLA. If there's a lot in that, hasn't kept pace with inflation, as we all know, but that's across the board right. too. Uh, and again, that's not a pay raise. That's no, a cost of living. So. There's a lot of things that are in that COLA that they're not just standardized, right? I mean, and, and, and COLAs, they take. There's a lot of things. It takes a lot of things into consideration. It does. So while it looks like I might be making a lot of money, it's taken me 25 years to get there. I started out at 11, I give an hour. By just taking. You know, it's a lot. Carol, I think you're worth every penny plus more. Great. You know, I, I do. There's uh, a lot of things anyone in this room doesn't think that, but it, it's hard for you, for me as a budget committee person, to stand up to someone who's got a 4% raise and said, I'll come to the library. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just, I, I, I mean, I take a look at the, the form we got that Karina provided that shows the total cost of, of employees, what, what they get plus their benefits. You know, I, you take that comparison and go around to a lot of other companies and, and, and see if they're they're making that if they're not. Right. Because the town has a great benefit package. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic yeah. Benefit so the people package. who can are eligible for that benefit So what I think I'm, I'm, I'm hearing is that all, all the departments can adjust the individual rates Amongst no. their part time no. people? No. no. All Just the secretary and the library is the trustees. by the trustees, not town manager. Okay. Discussion on the library? Thank you, girl. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll do fire. Number 11. Hello, Donald. Probably should. Yes, I know you, but I'm not sure if I know the names of your compadres here. <laughs> that Deputy Chief Brian Fairbrother, yeah. Assistant Deputy Chief, Chief Mike Wheat. Nice to meet you guys. And we've met before. We have. Yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, if it's not in my office, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, uh, you want to take this down through? Sure. Take some of the statistical uh, wages in the first portion here. Okay. And as you can see, we overspent the uh, firefighters on call. And that has been raised appropriately. Um, we did 258 calls that year. I don't remember the number here prior. Prior, yeah, 227. So we we've seen get <clears throat> we should get a listing of that. They're called what they were you know, told. Well, keep that. Um, we transitioned into the new PD software, so we don't use the fire station software. 
So, so you can't provide that? We can do that. Yeah, we can provide a list of calls. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good, good. Is there a chance to get a copy of that sometime? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 23 up from last year, 75 up from the year before. And most of those calls are what? What are they? Are they? Are they motor vehicle accidents, alarm activations, uh, mutual aid calls? And yeah, I normally would give you a breakdown of that. But right. We can use that software. Well, I guess I'm right. I guess one of the questions, if I can answer, right. do, that, do any of them um, bring in revenue um, as a result of? Calls like alarm activations or defaults or anything like that. For those only if it's a nuisance for the alarm ordinance. So it has to be get three nuisance alarm calls to a, the single establishment. Then after that, the, the PD will. It's a fifty dollar fine. After that, every call after that. Three calls in a year. Yeah. So when you go to an accident, is it like? When an ambulance goes and picks somebody up, or when a hiker's lost, can you charge fee for going there and cleaning up behind them or something like that? I, I'm just asking. Yeah, no, we never, we never have. I mean, it's the same, isn't it? Kind of sort of the same type of thing. We're providing emergency service. Yeah. I, you know, I did some research a few years ago and <clears throat> found that some municipalities tried to do that, but they didn't really get paid for the services that you know a lot of times the insurance companies don't provide uh, paying for motor vehicle accident for the fire department responding. But if you're an ambulance service and do a transport, you can bill for the medical transport. Right. I don't think we want to get into fire department by capitalism. I think I think, I think one of them. Oh, I'm a diehard capitalist. This is what I mean, you take that falls outside of it. What you want paid for service for? I think mean, there's two things like that. There's a call for an alarm that's you know they're having problems. If you go back three or four times, as opposed to single accident, which that I think it's well, the nuisance call up. Yeah, Everything else is supposed to be in what it was last year. But the overall, overall the line stuff was about 39,000 roughly for the labor. So is there, is there when you go to if it's the vehicles that are probably putting this up, you're saying is that what you're saying? Most of the vehicles because we have a lot of big fires in town. No, we've had I think we're up on mutual lake calls also this year. Uh, so is it that more a significant right? So are more the more firemen show up, and as as a result, that that's why the increases. Well, that, we're having that, a good, that's good attendance rate. Yes, we. <clears throat> I think yeah. half attendance rate, half the number of calls that we have right, throughout the year. I think it kind of contributes into that. That number. That, that's an interesting. That's interesting, because when things were bad and we talked about it, you couldn't get enough people to come. And right. it looks like you didn't spend we that much. Very much. Now people show up with what you need, and now it's like, hey, I'm spending all. But, uh, yeah, that's a good that's that's yes. good observation. Yeah, we don't have a huge group, but the crew that we do have are very reliable. They'll make every call they can. Right. So it's very good. I have a question. Yes, sir. Yeah, I um what is your average on scene time? Is it extended from even though you have more calls from last year, is your average on scene time increased quite a bit? Uh, it's it's all call dependent. You know, it, it depends. You know, we could be we could be on the backside of the tank for two hours on a call week for a record to get there and doing traffic control. And some calls are quick. I mean, you know, we're out of the station probably within seven minutes of the tone as a rule. I think that's about the average. And yeah, it, it's it's all dependent on the type of call. It could be a med call that we're assisting. It could be a person coding and we're assisting with CPR. Um, yeah, there's no set time for any one call. You know, it's all dependent on. Oh, I, 
I'm well aware of that. I'm just saying when you do your NIMFS report, it gives you your on-scene time for each personnel. Is that correct? Yep. Mike does that, yes. yes. Right. So you should have all your stats in front of you with your on-scene time for every call for every firefighter. Is that correct? For accountability. Am I correct with that, Mike? I don't have it in front of me now right now, but I can get it. No, but we, we calculate we took everybody's uh we took everybody what they were paid last year and how many hours they work and we divided it by how many calls they went on and on average we are around three hours a call three hours a call so if you go for an alarm activation it's three it's three hours per man per call no that is the average that they are on the call based on their total hours worked and the total numbers of call they showed up to so okay if they go on for a toast call and they're only out for an hour, that may be only an hour. But if they are stuck at a motor vehicle accident or on the tank or on the highway and they're there for eight hours, they're there for eight hours. We took total average based on how many hours they were, based on how many calls they went on. It averages roughly to three hours. Okay. Okay. And so when we send when we send per please. when we send personnel out on the highway, what what's our responsibility on the highway? Because fifty percent of all firefighters are now killed on motor vehicle accidents on highways. This is uh, operational. Yeah, very much operational. But I think that's outside of our scope. So one of the, one of the thing I just want to point out, we do when the tone goes out, we respond. It's an automatic two hours. Because it's a call. If we get a call within that, a second call within that, it's just the time of that call. So when you, if you get five, say you get five calls a day, but it's two or three hours in between, that could be 10 hours mm -hmm. per responder. And legally, we have to do that. You know, you can't, it's not like the old days where you just got paid the straight hours of the calls that you did when the respondents show up it's two hours per responder right automatically whether it's a 10 minute call or an hour and 59 minute call it's an automatic two hour pay which is also leading to a little bit of an increase in the budget here because we're staying compliant with the labor law to fill that requirement is that also, also that includes a very a difficult number is that 4% also included in this uh, $38,000 increase? Yes. It is. Okay. Well, yeah, Ron, yes, I, I don't mean to jump ahead of the budget, but that's right. if, if we're having, if you're going to more, more accident scenes and stuff like that, wouldn't fuel and stuff like that go up as well? Well, it, it, I mean, if, if yeah. you've got that kind of an end, it just seems to me that other things in the budget would increase as the the number of calls you're going to go to increase as well. It seems like it's well, it's not a crazy amount. It seems like it's, you've gone to a lot more, so you would think some of the other things in the budget would also go up. Yeah, but I think in past years, though, we haven't spent the entire budget. You know, we've been under in past years. We kind of just kept it the same because it's hard to predict. And we feel pretty comfortable, you know, staying at the five thousand for the fuel, you know, for the twenty-four budget. But for well, and we're also a town that the, the dense population of it is two miles long. It's not, not like we're going to outskirts of you know different ends of town to drive in twenty one way. You know, for the most part, it's we're a pretty dense town. Okay. Twenty-three. They go yeah. to up up on. You know, up, up to the notch, you yeah. go to down to Camp and Thornton, right? Yeah. I mean, so you do go outside of the town quite a bit. Yeah. Right. It, 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 so that's mutual aid when you go to different towns. Yeah, the town get so mutual aid's no financial assistance there either. Huh? No, because I'm trying. It's well, it's because <laughs> well, the, the mutual aid agreement we provide the assistance, but we also have the ability to call in their resources to help us. Yeah. So it's it's. It's just a benefit that you know, we don't look to try and collect from. And that's why we have that agreement. If we didn't have the agreement and we called for mutual aid, 
they they legally could charge us for it without that agreement. Um, I believe when we had the Nordic Indian fire years ago, I think it was uh, 2001, mm -hmm. we, we had apparatus come, I think, as far north as from Concord, and they tried to charge the town for their response up here with an engine. I'm not sure what the outcome was, but I wasn't involved with that. That part of it. <laughs> so, so the you increased could... number of calls is a hard fact. Right. Right. Yeah. Hard fact. Yep. Okay. So yeah, you could you could say that, but it's same, almost like that same thing of an average. Maybe all the calls were closer, and you only have right. one, yep. an average that you're looking at. But I see what you're talking about. Yes, you would automatically assume if every if every call was the same and you had more calls, then your cost would go up. Well, we're also we're. Depending on the call, you know, we may bring the engine and the command vehicle. We'll fill the seats in one truck right. rather than look to bring in all the apparatus. Right. You know, we try to mode efficiency and for the type of call that it is, rather than putting one one driver in the seat of each vehicle and going up, we may only yeah. need the engine. We'll fill the seats in the, the engine, so we're only burning fuel on that engine. Makes sense. And the next time you might take that same vehicle, but you go longer. But that, it all comes right. down to it's a wash. Yeah. 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 Yep. 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 So it's try to try to be cognizant of the taxpayer dollars. And it's complicated. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you do uh does the fire department go out on person rescues? Like Lost hiker, type rescues too. Is that something not, that you do, or is that not not usually climbing the mountains? But if it's out in Lincoln, Lincoln Woods, um, we've been out numerous times there. Oftentimes, the fishing game requests us for anything, any materials, whatever, help, manpower. If that, that's what we <clears throat> call that, the Lincoln Woods, you know, Georgia Falls. So, so do you get any revenue for those? No, I'm a fishing game for charge for that. You can, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll leave, we'll leave that. They can they can expend their legal line on trying to collect from the hiker, not us. <laughs> well, Chief, I have a question. Yes, sir. Chief, um, in the last year or so, um, how many of the guys have done any educational programs? Do, do you know that? I missed. I you missed part you of broke that. up, Al. Can you repeat that, please? Yeah, in the last year. Uh, your 12 firefighters you have or 14 firefighters, how many have done educational programs? One or two, or, or everybody's done something educationally, like firefighter one, firefighter oh, yeah. three, fire officer one and two? Well, everyone has continuing ed, whether it be online. Um, Cannon Barnaby did fire one, fire two. Kurt Warnick did fire one. Um, and it also got his EMT. Uh, we had now have Lizzie Bullard, uh, our newest member. She's in a combined fire one, fire two class. Expedited class. Lauren's a leader's trainer. Lauren was a train the trainer program. Uh, and then just additional online programs. Now, do they get a pay increase according to their certifications? They they get a step for every small yeah. yeah, business. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And uh, Chief, what certification are you? Level two? I have fire one, fire two. Okay. EMT? Um, I let that lapse. I was a nationally registered EMT in 2000 until 2002. I didn't get a chance to ride in the back of the bus much. I was mainly the driver, and I felt that I had other responsibilities that I could better apply myself to. Excellent, excellent. And the training wages, um, does that include the classes or just the uh, wages itself to pay the firefighter to go to class? Uh, the, way, the firefighter wages, training wages are for members that do fire one and or fire two. We, we pay their hourly wage to take those two classes. I believe. Okay. I think it was this budget committee, I think three years ago, that had questioned me on that. If I paid, and I said at the time, 
we didn't pay. And that's when the budget committee asked me to get a number and that got put into the budget. So we kept that going forward even until the 24th budget. And we also provide transportation, correct? We don't allow them to take their own vehicles, correct? Yeah, they'll, they'll take the command vehicle or sometimes depend on the side of uh, how many people are going to the particular class will borrow a van from the rec department, the, the town vehicle. So they're covered under workman's comp in case something happens en route or coming back from the training, correct? That's correct. They have to sign a log when they go to class. And when they get back from class, they sign back, back out so that we're fully compliant with the workman's comp. The other, the other question I have is the $6,000 they're requesting for the overtime wages. If they're all part-time and call people, who is eligible for overtime? The $5,000, the budget for overtime is for Ryan Fairbrother. Because oh. he, works 20, he works 20 hours in the executive, or this is how his, this is how his pay is broken down. 20 hours under executive, 20 hours under fire. He works very little overtime under executive for his code enforcement duties. Most of his overtime would come from calls in the evening. Okay. I, and okay. And the other, the only other question I have is um, under my paper, I don't know if you get updated the paperwork, but all under all the expenditures, there's nothing. It's blank lines. This this current one, Al, you don't have. No, I must not have. I mean, I didn't get it here in Arizona. Well, I mean, even the one that I provided you back in December had the expenditures as of that date. So. Right. This is twelve twenty. So. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Chief, do we have any plans for um, the fire department receiving their own UTV? Just for the fire department, not have to borrow the towns and dedicate it for you know rescue, especially in the winter with tracks and everything. Well, what I'm what I'm gonna propose that we do is we want to move that into a CIP item. So we can yep. plan accordingly and not try to do it all in one fell swoop. Uh, per the selectmen, we have the availability to use the, uh, the UTV that Public Works has in the event that we need it. That is a, a town vehicle. So, you know, the next CIP program will be looking to put the cost of a properly outfitted UTV for the fire department in the CIP program so that we don't adversely affect the uh, tax rate by doing a warrant article for a sizable expenditure there. How much of an expenditure are we talking? Probably $30,000, am I correct? Yeah. I, yeah, I think you're close. You know, it depends on how we upfit it. You know, we want to we want to buy the appropriate size one and fit the need that uh, that will require of it. And also a trailer. Good trailer. Oh yeah. I'm in full support of that in the future, sooner than later. Thank you. Um, moving on, uh, telephone, cell phone said stayed flat. Their employment, training, and expenses uh, that actually went down went from 69 to 5,300. And then news, travel, and conferences. We added the $800 state fire mutual aid contract with services. So it went from 1000 to 1800 total that area. <clears throat> the under contracted services, I believe, you can correct me, but I think think we're moved around in this budget so it's more transparent and better identified that's why the next category looks like it went down significantly 
but some things were moved out of that category from the previous year. Yeah, the biggest one is that $25,000 for truck repairs. Um, it, it should be in vehicle and it should be in the vehicle fuel right. and maintenance line versus the contracted services line. So we just moved it from contracted services to vehicle. Do you, do you track that, Ron? Yes, I do. Vehicle maintenance? Vehicle maintenance, yeah. 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 Do you know what you spent last year? Oh, not yet. Now you put well, I just, I, I'm pretty sure we went over. <laughs> I don't know that number right off the top of my head. That's fine. Can you get it for me? Yeah. Thanks, sir. Um, I'll just interrupt for a second. Is Can you get that for the committee? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I, that's fine. That's quite all right. And, uh, I thank you for speaking up. It gives me a chance to remind everybody that there's two ways of getting information, just to, to, to right to know. You can do that. And how does that work? As far as somebody, everything that's public information, how does the public get that from? Anyone have any questions? Yeah, yeah so if, if it, traditionally it's a 91A request, it, 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 but people don't have to call it a 91A request for it to be considered a 91A request. We've learned that really. Um, so they would reach out to a department in town manager, whatnot, saying that they would like to request that information. Most 91A requests, if they are made to a department head, they are then filtered through me. Right. Um, we will look at the appropriate information. We'll figure out what is exempt disclosure and what is actually public information. And then we have five days to respond to the requester to give them a time frame in which we will procure that information for them or gather that information for them. Right, and they do that very well. Follow them. Table of practice. Yeah. Does it have to be in writing or request? What's that? Does the right the request have to be in writing or can it be verbal? It can be verbal. We we traditionally like to have it uh in writing just so there's a time and date stamp on when it was requested because right. legally by law we have to respond within five business days. Tell them um, how long it's going to take us to get five days to give them that information, that's inaccurate. We have days to respond to that request, letting them know when? how much time we were going to need to fulfill it. Okay. It can't be it can't be like six months. Years. No, yeah, it's got to be a reasonable time frame. We also don't have to provide anything that we don't have. So a lot of the people that we receive requests from, they want this, this, and this, and this. And most of the time, we don't have that all in a centralized document. A lot of the times we might not even have it electronically. So we only have to provide it in its true original fashion, unless it seems to be more cost effective for us to be able to scan something or there's, there's a lot of things on a pension schedule. So you may be asking for something that the town was only legal legally required to have for, for a certain period of time right. and then it purge. And I run into that department job a lot. So yeah, but I mean, if it's not purged, you still have to give it. Oh, yeah, oh, so if you yeah. physically yeah. have it, yeah. it, has it. Yep. 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 and the committees don't have access to any information that the public doesn't have access to, correct? Uh, that would be correct. Yes. That's what I was going to say because it's all public meetings, so we're just doing it. Technically, we're asking, you know, we're not filling out the form here, we're asking for it. it's public information. And what I'm getting at is just because of sometimes our language does that. Like, just as an example, is you said, can you get that for me? If the rest of the committee didn't want her to get that for us, then how are we going to have to get it? Oh, I just don't even pay it up for that. Yeah, exactly. Which is what I did last year. I've done in the past. I know. But when the committee didn't want it, I just signed one in. Well, and I will say that. Easily, and I've expressed that to them that I would prefer that this request be made at the budget committee level if you're asking off for it on behalf of the budget committee. But if you're asking for it as an individual, as a president, then that is, I will procure it like I would any other 91 in. And so everybody knows is as a member of the budget committee, you can't do anything on your own. The budget committee can ask. I mean, you can do well, as a public citizen, you can. You can't represent yourself as a budget committee. You can't represent yourself. Yourself. And, and, 
on the behalf of the budget committee. That's what I was kind of getting at. Is right. as a group we can do things, but individually I can't. You can't. Nobody. Nobody really can. So that way, and that's what I was asking. So if something like that comes up, you do want to. You do it through a ninety-two A, ninety-one A, and you do it that way. But be, and you can understand why it's that way because if you come in as a budget committee member or any other, member, it sounds as if you're acting with much more influence than you have as an individual. The committee has influence; the individual doesn't. If, if nobody wants that information, just as a group, you can say that, and, and I will procure it on my own. I there's no, no, this was just educational. Oh, no, 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 I'm serious. If, 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 if it comes that way, I'll, seriously, I don't have a problem. That wasn't it. I didn't have any problem. It was just educational. That's all. You gave me an opportunity. Educational. I mean, you can't get information on personalized uh, health benefits and stuff like that. You can get amounts. There's can't right. names go with that. Right. Certain things that are exempt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And that they're exempt, and that's probably exempt from 91A, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's what I mean. We're the same on the same anything level as that is. So as long as we're making the request, I think the three-year average of that cost would be more valuable than they spent the last year. For a vehicle maintenance? Yes. Because those things fluctuate from right. year to year. Oh yeah. Right. Does anybody have objections to getting that information? Then no, the committee would like to have that. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Paul. It was a long way around the horn, but <laughs> electricity, FN3000, uh, propane. So, I have a question about that. Okay. Electricity and, and all, of the, all the other areas seem to have gone up substantially. Um, and the fire department did. Is there a reason? You mean the, yeah, electricity. the 2024 requests have gone up to yeah. the yeah. Well, the 2024 requests have gone up based on usage and the knowledge that well, the kilowatt hour is going up. The rate for a kilowatt hour, right? right? Yeah. So right. the rate for kilowatt hour goes up for the fire department as well, right? I mean, it would, it, but it, essentially we're asking for $700 more than what we spent, which is nearly a third of the budget. So we think we can absorb that. <laughs> it's going to be tighter at the end. It's going to be much tighter at the end, yeah. but... Hey, what's that kilowatt hour again? Uh, uh, for a couple? 17. 17 cents, yeah. And now we've got such a nice speed shut off a lot. If you're not in the building, you know, you know yeah, much there's much. Over cell, uh, not over cell. So if you're just sitting in the office working, then the bang lights aren't on and stuff, the uh, heating level is on. Uh, propane, we went up, our, our usage was 40, uh, expended, total expenditure was 49.25. That's part of that due to the propane work. We're a lot, yeah, we're, we're in a new contract with them, but I, I think it just was the weather that yeah. we were experiencing last year. Yeah, I want to go back just one minute to the, the building maintenance. Um, here for three thousand dollars. <laughs> so, someone's over there doing a someone did a analysis of the building. So are there issues that need to be taken care of in building maintenance? That they're all gonna be done with this $3,000 or is our- No, so we received a grant through, uh, I applied for a grant through Grafton County Park Fund. We received $40,000 for us to do a structural analysis of the fire department. So we had them come out, we had we contracted with Two Boys and King they came out, they gave us an initial report, which said that the building is pretty much structurally sound. There are some issues with cracking in the concrete, but those just need to be monitored. But we do have issues with the trust system, the trust system. Um, and so we are, the original structural analysis was a couple thousand dollars, it wasn't anything. So we used uh, the remaining balance that we have, which is pretty significant from that grant, to have Dubois King, King come out and do a further evaluation on the trust system and create a plan for us to correct the issues with the trust system to re- The bracing. Re, yeah. Bracing of the trust system. If you go up into the uh, attic of the fire department. I've been there. 
Yep. So it has the stickers on it as everything. So they're doing a whole trust analysis to make sure that it was installed properly and the notice is there. Have they done that? They were here last week. We haven't received them. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what the repairs come out of that forty thousand dollars? The repairs as well will come out of that forty thousand. Yeah. Okay, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Only yeah. three thousand here. I was wondering if maybe. Yeah, yeah, and again, we have plans to upgrade the bathrooms, and we have plans to do a couple of the projects this past year. But we wanted to wait to see what the structural analysis report said before we put money into the fire department, depending on the outcome of that report. Okay. And so that's question. Thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, material supplies, clean supplies, that all stay the same flat here. Chief, Chief, I have a question. Material supplies. Could you explain how do you spend $5,000 on material supplies? Well, some of that could be the, the foam that we use for putting fires out. Foam? Yeah. Okay, that's a hundred dollars. That's a hundred and five dollars a bucket. How many gallons of foam do you use a year? We buy it by the fifty-five gallon drum. We have a okay. 40, we have a forty-gallon cell on the rescue. I believe twenty-eight or thirty-gallon cell on engine one and engine two. Well, that was only set up for Class B, so we didn't we can't use Class A in that. So you know, again, you know, we use it. We replace it. And I can't forecast how much we're going to use because we don't know how many fires we're going to get or car fires or whatever. Okay, that's all. All right, that's a lot of foam, but okay. And what else, what other materials do we need? Building materials. You know, we we keep an inventory of plywood or whatever. If we have a a fire somewhere and we ventilate a building, you know, we'll put some plywood up to cover where we ventilated to just. Secure the building and we'll turn it back over. It's just, you know, we, we have a line for materials and supplies as we need it. Okay. I mean, as a, I'd like to ask the board to ask the, the town is there a way we can actually get for each expenditure line all the expenditures for that each, each line for next year? So, not just the fire department, but any department that basically tells us how much they spend. We know exactly what they spent down to the penny for each line. Is that something we can get, Karina? No, we don't. Our accounting system goes based on the chart of accounts. So the major numbers you're seeing, 01, 442, 410 for electricity, that's how our accounting system works. I can give you a printout of every single bill that was paid out of that line, but I can't individually break it down into materials and supplies, cleaning supplies, helmets, miscellaneous. I, I, I can give you a list of everything that came out of there, but I, it, it would take me three months to break down the thousands of lines that we have and each individual line within that. Okay. Okay. Because it's the accounting system. I, I understand. Okay. I'm just, I, I know there's different accounting systems out there. And I know when I do my budget, I have to account for every line item. It comes each line, every penny I spend, we can be accounted for. I and I show the budget committee exactly where each line is. I didn't know if that's something we could be provided for next year or not. No, like I said, I can I can provide you a list of every single thing that was paid out of the major line account number, but I can't break it down for all these individual little tiny things. Okay. But I think Ron does that for the Town manager to the right. pool of the selectmen, meaning it's almost like a it's almost like an operative thing. Is you know what the breakdown is, and you have to present and that the right. budget to justify your budget. But I could be wrong on this. Uh, uh, no, we, we try to come ahead and present what we think our needs are going to be. Right, we try to budget appropriately. Right, but in the spending of it. You oversee the spending of it and where it's spent. And As I code the bills. All the justification the for all of that spending goes through there. Yep. And then it goes through the select. Yep. I would think that would be. In the manifest. Yep. Yeah. So I, I would think we would want to get into every detail. That's a lot to have. I mean. And how they spend. Right. Micromanaging there. That's micromanaging. Right. How they, like I said, it would take me months to prepare a budget that way for you. If I could have created 
uh, an expense account for every single line that you see in the budget. It would, it would take months for that. How is that one of the expenses? And it would also be ever changing every single time you meet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but overall, how they spend the money is beyond us. Correct. Right. Right. How they spend it is beyond us. So right. Five thousand dollars. If we don't think the five thousand dollars is excessive, then how they spend it is up to them. Okay. Unless you go to a line item budget. Where the bottom line is what she has. Yeah. Well, even a line item budget is based on each department. It's not based on each right. line within the department. True. So the that bottom line. line would be fire two twenty, police a million, right. whatever That's it right. wouldn't be town used to do that. I don't know. I don't want to know where you spend on paper clips. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to know you didn't spend five thousand dollars. All right. Yeah, that would be not good. Yeah, no, and I think this is sad because Ron's been known to do that. I was using all those to stitch the cracks in the <laughs> SD Brock. Right, and that's a, that's there a you go. valid expense. There you go. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on. Again, to uh, I think we already talked about vehicles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, then under equipment, obviously we every year we try to get some new fire gear as they get close to being outdated. But every fire person has two sets because if you have one call and it gets contaminated, that person will be out of service and be properly. So every fire person has two sets of gear and so this is kind of a scheduled replacement rotation. We do you still clean them in house? We do. We have we have a we have an extractor yeah. that was bought probably six years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. And two or three years ago I bought the the actual dryer for the gear. <laughs> so it's all in house. Zero point two five. Well, yeah. well yeah. it's a big cabinet with a oh, it's, yeah. It's not like a closed door. No, 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 no. no and that's and that's, I don't want to throw speakers in one night, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Well, and, and the purpose of having the proper extractor in the proper drying unit is to not shorten the life of the gear. So mm -hmm. you bring up a good point. You know, years ago, uh, we uh, one pair. But we used to just, we used to just throw the gear in the dryer, and the tumbling beats the heck out of the material. So, it's yeah. heavy, and it creates unneeded wear. You know, so we're actually getting a better longevity out of our investment, having the proper cleaning tools to maintain it. And, and, and well, that too. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in there we have helmets, uh, miscellaneous equipment. That could be forestry gear, you know, axes, picks, um, the actual forestry garments. It's not actual bunker gear. Right. Um, and then four sets of bunker gear. That's 20,000. And boots. So that line stayed the same as last year. It's just kind of a planned replacement. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the bottom line, and I was talking with Karina earlier, the bulk of the increase is the the labor. Yes, ninety nine percent. Yep. There's you have thirteen. Yeah, thereabouts. Fifteen. Fifteen fire. Yeah, well, two don't. Very active. Very active, right? Well, we're 13 on the list, but we have we did add another one since the we printed. So, and Ron's on the list. What do you what do you consider fully staffed? I mean, is 13 what you're looking for, or that's the best we can do right now? That's what we've done with our continued recruitment. So we're working very hard and retaining the people that are active and willing to do what we ask. You know, do this job. I know when there was a study done at one time about how quick yeah, this like the fire department was able to make it to a scene and how fast the firefighters were responding and being able to get to the station. So that, that's my question. So, I mean, are you 
Are you really understaffed? Well, if you had your best fire department, how many how many members did you have? I, th I think we used to set the benchmark around twenty five on the roster, given the fact that we would not get twenty five on every call because some work days, some work nights. We were hoping to have a good mix of availability day and night. So you're about halfway to what you would consider a full time. I mean, a full staff call. For call. For call. More yeah. than better. Yeah. So, and, and, and a fully, <laughs> you'd be at 50, right? I oh. haven't, I actually haven't well, analyzed that. Korean saying no, it runs. Well, I haven't. I'm I, not sad. I don't uh, know. I, I, yeah, I, I don't I, wonder what that number is. That, that would, I'd have to do some research on that. And you got to look at the geographic area you're trying to cover and your call volume and the types of calls. Well, that that hit, all plays into. Now you hit my, now you hit my, get close to my point. <laughs> Town Lincoln's growing like a big ass bird. And it, it's geographically, Town Lincoln's growing. The amount of tourists that come in here in the no. summer and the winter are growing. Well, I don't. I think mean, this, 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 this at, at some point. I don't know. I mean, go ahead. I mean, because no, wait, wait. I'm just sitting here thinking the inevitable is, you know, with volunteerism being hard to hard to get at these days. I mean, I, I would think the town would be looking at when they're going to go or how they're going to go to a fully. I mean, to me, that, that that's looking to the future. Yeah. I mean, it, and the, and the future's not that far away. Considering the size, the hotels, the number of people in this community, the number of people in the valley when they're here, summer and winter. I mean, the, the selection look at a lot of different things, but I would think one of the things they would look at is safety and, and when, what triggers those points. I think, I think I think we have good attendance right now. I think we have a you know strong attendance. That's so. correct. That's a that's a big change. Right. right. And you and can and have twenty five call members, members but out. only three show up. If we have fifteen call members and twelve show up, that's a much better percentage. Oh no no. Than, I, mean, I understand all that. And so I think we have pretty good attendance on all calls. Yeah. You know we went. We have mutual aid. We have mutual aid. We have pretty good attendance on calls. If we were to transition to a full time fire department, this budget would quadruple I'm, at, at the very least. Um, and so, and not only this budget, personnel administration and every other department that is based on payroll. I understand that. But, but this I'm morning it showed the light. Like, again, when I'm, when I'm things things are, right? I'm not saying that you're this not providing the right service. It's just, I look at the same thing, for example, with the, with the sewer department. Eventually, there'll be a whole new area down there that and, and a whole new system down there than what's there now but the town should be i would think thinking ahead and looking at the big picture as brian likes to call it that 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 is you know when are we going to transition to that full-time fire department when are we going to have to put in that sewer system i mean because the town all i see is building going around you know, I will say this. Yes, I work in the community for my own pieces. I went from a on call volunteer fire department to a full time fire department. And in doing so, we lost every single one of our call members. Well, not every single one, but 90% of them because they weren't as needed. They weren't allowed to show up to every call. They weren't, they were, they were limited in what they could perform. And they said, I'm not waking up at three o'clock in the morning for this. I'm not doing it. So if we do right now, we have an active force, we have good call attendance. That's not, it's working, right? So I yeah. say oh, sure. that's that's right. that way, as long as we can, that doesn't mean that we're not looking to the future for if this doesn't work anymore, if this stops working, we obviously will have to reevaluate. But I think the fire department right now is in a good spot that saves us money yes, and very keeps the community safe. Right. I'm not looking to spend money. No, nope. and I'm going to interrupt just for a second is because what it is is, yes, we understand that. But in the way that is re repeatedly presented, it's somewhat like well, we need to go to that now. We need to get started with that. Now, everybody's thinking about it, but I'm excited and say, let's keep working on what you've got going here because it sounds like it's doing very well. Well, it is. Yeah. And, and somewhere down the road could be 20 years. Yeah. It could be tomorrow. If I may, but, it, but it won't be. If I may, we're not the first community that's ever faced 
right? That decision, and there's probably a trigger point. There's probably metrics available that says after yeah, to right. reach this population level, you should consider that. And so, okay. I, I well, think, I, and I think we would be reinventing. We're not. If but the city would like to vote to put a couple hundred thousand dollars into the fire department line so we can hire a couple of full timers. I think we would take it. Well, I think we tried to do that. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 yeah. There, are, there are posters out vote no on article, whatever. Once right, everybody. Right, right, right. I remember that. Yeah. Right. So, so you're doing they, fine. I mean, yeah, from my, yeah. my point of view, I can't so, speak for the whole committee. From my point. So, so just so they're the ones who want to show up with the jobs. <laughs> Exactly right. Well, so just to go a little further with what Paul said, it's not that the town of Lincoln is getting bigger. We're landlocked between states and national four. What we really need to be concerned about is the density. The density. The density right. and the size of the buildings, you know, and I'll, I'll pick on Riverwalk. He's building it. I'm not really picking on you. But, <laughs> just but, but, you know, and, you know, no, but the point I'm trying to get across is with good enforcement and attention to building codes. Dennis's building is a type two A building. It's probably one of the least um, burnable buildings in the town in the town of Lincoln as it stands right now. It has all the modern technology. So with what the uh, the committee that meets to look over building permits and the permits okay. for these the, for these hotels and everything and having the fire marshal's office review their means and methods and making sure they built the code, even though the density is getting a lot more dense rather quickly, it's really not the hotels and the big structures that have a lot of oversight. It's the million dollar homes that get very little right. oversight and it's a lot of them are big timber, big open areas, which in the in, in the fire event, the fire can grow twice its size. Well, it's sprinklers are. well some are getting sprinklers, <laughs> and there is a development that Paul's aware of that. Um, so I think just with good education and attention to detail on how these buildings are being constructed, even though the density is getting lot more dense if we do our jobs and make sure we stay compliant with the fire codes and everything it's going to make our lives a lot easier even though there's going to be an alarm activation and we're going there we know what we're going to this is a least uh, burnable building or um, combustible building so we're, we're going to have other things that we're going to have to overcome mitigate you know maybe a smoke condition or whatever and yeah. Okay, so that, we want to move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. I think one. Well, yeah, I know. I know. Sorry. Is there something about a budget? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. I know. I know. At one time, they were, and I think it was maybe I think I got that as a piece here. They were going to have got air packs or some extra hose stationed at certain places. Does that happen all the time? For you, for the fire department? No, no. Because so if a building, a bigger building comes in, is it up to the builder to provide those things, or is no. that something that's got to go into the budget? No, that goes to the fire department. No, that goes in the budget because we, before we, we need to be in total control of the protective devices that we're going to rely on our safety. We couldn't just stage air packs at a hotel and hope to be able to that they're going to work. So we 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 budget for them and we maintain them. There was somewhere about hoses or something like that at one time, but 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 I guess it's it's just something to consider if I guess I don't know if it's a budget thing, but if if there's a cost associated with supplying the fire department stuff that it gets if it can get put them through planning process. Um, Oh, kind of like a, it's, in it's the, very specific about impact fees that have right. to be dedicated. Right, you right. You can't just like we're gonna buy. Oh no, no, no! But it could that, that could be that, that is specific. Yeah, if you're gonna is use it right? for every property in town, yeah, then right, then you have an issue. Well, right. that that's that's what some towns have run into when they uh, told the developer, "Well, you gotta buy you gotta buy me a ladder truck." Well, okay, I'll buy you the ladder truck, but you're gonna use it only for my building. I think I believe that happened in the town of Plymouth 
when I think the college bought them a lot of truck or a piece of equipment, they weren't allowed to use that for mutual aid calls. That was for the town of Yeah, it has to be proportionate right. to the impact here. Right, right. Uh, you are, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm about to figure that out because I can't use it. Anyway, okay. Yeah. On we go. Are we all finished? I am, sir. Right. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you later. See ya. Thank you. Right, the fun stuff. Well, let me, let me follow up and put up say things that I realize I got to clarify. Is the committee can ask for anything from the town. We can ask for every bill that ever came through here in the last five years. If that is material that will help us formulate a budget, the committee can ask for any of that material. The committee can. So, and we can talk, to, we can ask to speak to anybody within the town. We can't control their hours, but we can ask to speak to anybody that's in the town that works with them. But that means that the committee would have to get together and say, hey, we want to see all of this. We would like to see all of this. We would like to see all of that. So the discussion would happen long here before it ever goes to the request. As an individual, you can ask for anything you want. But just so you know, the budget committee has that. That's our goal. I mean, that's our, our role is we can ask for anything we need that will help us formulate the budget. Just the budget, not how they spend it, not what happens after that, but for the total dollar. Wayne? Oh, yeah. Um, Mr. Wayne? Obviously, the fire department is critical to the safety of this town. Working with the fire chief and the department to this budget committee. Absolutely. All right, on the personnel, right. number five. All right, on the personnel. So I believe we touched base briefly on this in the first meeting. We talked about potential personnel changes. Right. So, um, Starting right off the bat, you're going to see our health insurance for the non-union employees jumped up roughly 24 percent. We'll call it 25. We're using that. Um, as I mentioned uh, in the first meeting uh, last year, I did a survey of uh, municipalities. Roughly 60. If anyone wants to look at it, I printed out. Roughly 60 towns responded. We were the only town out of the 60 towns that responded that did not offer. Uh, health insurance to uh, a spouse or dependents. Uh, this truly limits our ability to be competitive in the labor market. I know from my own personal experience, this was kind of a make or break item for me coming on board in Lincoln. I am the, it's always been the health insurance provider for my family and knowing that I would no longer be able to do so was made me had to contemplate whether or not to come to the town of Lincoln. I'm here now, I'm happy with my decision, but it makes us less competitive in the labor market when every municipality that surrounds us offers health insurance for spouse independence at either 0% paid by the employee or a very small percentage. Uh, again, I have this for anyone who wants to look at it. So I brought this to the attention of the selectmen. We also have employees that are currently working for us that don't want to be promoted into certain positions because it would change their status between being a union employee to a non-union employee, and they didn't want to come because they weren't going to be able to afford the town's health insurance, the non-union health insurance. So it's limiting not only our ability to get new employees, but it's also limiting our ability to promote the good employees we have within. So it's a major issue. I brought this to the selectmen. I did a full evaluation on all the health insurance uh, programs or options that we could provide. And after going through it with the selectmen over a few meetings, we decided that we would try to make a, uh, a change. And we try, we would try to start offering a health insurance to both spouses and dependents, but we were going to have to, I don't want to say lessen, but we were going to, right now the town has a very rich 
health benefits program, where it's a zero dollar deductible and it's a Cadillac plan. We're obviously to make it cost effective for the community. We have to, I don't want to say lessen or cheapen the plan, but we have to look at all their alternatives, plans with that offer a deductible, plans that help health savings accounts, plans that would reduce the cost for the overall employee that the town would be paying for, the overall premium that the town would be paying for. So we decided upon a plan that the town thinks is fair for the employees. It has a deductible. It has, you know, obviously other um, avenues that we can go down. We, um, our open enrollment doesn't start till July. So it's only gonna be half the year this year. So we are, we'll stay under our current plan until June and then we'll go through open enrollment. And so it, it's kind of a guess right now, how many more employees are gonna come on? How many more employees are gonna take a family or a two person plan? So it's our best estimate at this point. So are you giving an option between the Cadillac plan for one person and a plan with co pays and deductions for the whole plan. We we've, we've discussed that, and we actually think that we're going to not offer the Cadillac plan with the zero deductible. We're going to move towards a one thousand dollar deductible and a three thousand dollar deductible, and the town will contribute to that deductible amount through a health savings plan or a health reimbursement plan. What are those other avenues you just referred to that you're looking at? You said that with, there are some other avenues that you were looking at as well. I think you were talking about options. Right, similar to what Brent said. Right now, we have a, a, a zero deductible plan, a 1,000 deductible plan, a 3,000 deductible plan. That's what Health Trust has shown us the numbers for right now. So we have discussed potentially offering a more expensive plan, but the employee would have to pay more a percentage-wise versus having it 100% paid by the town, or they could potentially do the higher deductible plan and have it be paid for at a greater percentage by the town. Do you, do you have any, and I don't know if this might be hard to get, but quantify, can you quantify any of the, we've lost X amount of employees because of that, we had interest and now it's not there because we don't have this plan or these employees have come come to us asking about having a two person plan and we, we don't have it. I mean, is there something, was there a catalyst of, to doing this besides just wanting to give yes. the employees more or was is what I'm asking? Yes, no. We have employees that currently are married, spouses and on the plan, who have asked, are we ever going to look at health insurance again? We have had vacancies in the public works department for over a year. We have had, as I said before, downstairs, we have people who don't want to be, promo be promoted to the town's plan because we take them out of the union plan and put them on the town's plan. I mean, those are specific things that have happened in my two years. But I know, and again, I, everybody's looking for help. I mean, right. so it, and it, it, it's a matter of who's got the best best pay and the best everything and else. And the best benefits. Sure. And we that definitely they, don't have the best go to, But not everybody has the ability financially to provide what the town can provide. So it kind of puts everybody, what I'm trying to say is a lot of the other employers within the town who can't meet what the town's doing, it takes, you know, those people can't afford to do that. Yeah, so, right. You know, I mean, it, it's sure. But if I'm a public works laborer and I'm making twenty dollars an hour, and this town's going to pay me twenty dollars, and this town's going to pay me twenty dollars, but this town's going to pay for me to have my whole family on a health insurance plan, and this town's going to pay for zero, I'm going to the other town that's going to offer me the health insurance. Oh no, no, I, I and, and I agree with that. But what I what I was trying to say was, so you're going to go there, but you're going to take the the, the Contractor down the road, and I'll just use a truck driver. So a truck driver's coming to going to come to Lincoln because now he's going to get spouse and himself, and he's all the other benefits. So, and I guess I'll just use Rex Caller for example. He's not going to get the use of that guy because he's going to come to the town that has more. So uh, we're we're taking away from the pool of employees for a lot of other places as well. Is what I'm saying. I, I hear what you're. I hear what you're saying. I, 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 I'm not saying it's fact. I'm just saying that it, I hear that. I do. It's it's a thing. I don't know if it, but it's it's not our problem. Yeah, it's, it's not our it's problem. It's like Gold's problem. It's a, I mean, I can make the same argument with or Dennis. giving the, the library workers an extra two dollars an hour. Right? Are they making more than my cleaning lady? That's right. Uh, now I'm competing. I get that. I don't know that we can solve that at all. Well. Well, well the, it's on the backs of the taxpayers, so it's, it, the it pool is, funding uh, is easier to give out this way. But if the town is trying to track well, employees, they 
Right. Look at what other it. people are offering and try to be in the same room. But I think you got to take a look to Brett, which we don't too often. I, I've been on this committee for a lot of years and I don't think I've ever seen it done, but take a look at um, what the community in the general areas are paying totally for benefit packages and employees. To make it fair when you make a net comparison, you know, but what does a truck driver get? That's what you do. Right? No, no, what? No, no, I'm talking the total benefit package, not just the help. It's not just the help. It's the help. It's a light. It's a short term. It's a long term disability. And if you it's look at the, I'll, I'll send you this, or I'll make copies for everyone. It has that short term disability, short term, long term disability, life insurance. It's all on the so, spreadsheet. Right. And, so and it's based out. And I'll tell you this. Does it give the total? Well, let's not interrupt each other. Well, well, I'm saying. Every municipality that I have ever worked for, and responding to this as well, offers short term, offers pretty similar benefit packages short term, long term life insurance. It's a pretty standard benefit package health insurance, dental, short term, long term life. When it comes to a municipality, private sector is very different, but municipal work was founded on you might not get paid the most, but you're going to have good benefits. But now, now it's the other way around. Well, that's the labor world. I mean, we've always had the town of Lincoln provided these services to their employees up until a few years ago. Well, that didn't provide this once again health care costs. Jim, Jim has so hand. crazy. Hold on, Jim has his hand up. I just where are these towns? I mean, yeah, they, some towns are wealthier than other towns. Yeah, sure. Not in New Hampshire, in Coas County. Like I said, there's six Alexandria, Ashland, Belmont, Berlin, Bosco and Bow, Bristol, Campton, Conway, Francistown, Franklin, Freedom, Fremont, Guilford, Gorham, Grantham, Greenfield, Haverhill, Hampstead, Henniker, Holderness, Laconia, Lincoln, Littleton, Merrimack, Maltonboro, New Durham. They're in our area. I, I'm not picking yeah, no. I'm not picking Nashua to compare us to. I like the popular. Can, can the committee get a copy of it? Let's hold on about copies. She's asked, she's offered us copies. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. yeah we, we, can, we can do that. I, yeah, one, two other things that, one of the things I mentioned is, is Brent said that it's not our. I, I, that's okay. I, I, yeah, I just do this stuff as educational as a point of the private sector meets with the public sector here because we've been elected to represent the private sector, but the individual citizens. So if the town is competing for wages and laborers, is our constituents might have an issue with it. So therefore we're representing them as well as we're representing the town. So all that stuff, nothing's excluded. That's what I mean, nothing, nothing's out of the realm of, of what we're talking about. And is I, I, earlier on, I heard that it says like, we have a grand, we have a fantastic benefit package. That was earlier on tonight. Somebody said that we have a great benefit package. But then we, I just heard this here that we have don't have a great package. That's not good. the the single person plan that we have is the best single that's person plan plan you can get. The single person, okay, yeah, that's, that's what the I only mean. thing we offer. That's what is I mean. a single person, plan. and it's well, the best one you can get. No, we have four employees that are grandfathered because of longevity. How many employees do we have? Uh, full time employees. Yeah, they take benefits. Uh, yes. Uh, 20. 20. So four out of 20. Let me just make this. It's not that I'm unconcerned with that because I'm in the same business. I got to hire employees and, uh, and pay them. Yes. And I don't want this entity to use my tax dollars to, to over compete. But again, right. as Corinne said, our certain. Corinne. Corinne. Yeah. Corinne. I keep it. Look at me. Corinne. Corinne. The municipalities uh, tend to be heavier skewed towards benefits than the private sector. I don't want those benefits. I want the cash. Uh, so that's kind of the way it's always been. But it, we should be in the same area as other people. But most places no longer offer anything like a Cadillac zero deductible. No. No right. health plans for anyone. That's a dynamic. So, I mean, that's something we should be pivoting off from. Uh, and, and I think you're on the loss of your own. Getting a broader uh, plan and hopefully 
need for considerable savings because those zero deductible plans are useless. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. Most towns are not are not having those zero deductible plans because they come with a price tag. You're trying to be cost effective. That's why in order to do something like this, we had to go to a deductible plan. We had to go to a plan that may not be considered Cadillac in order to achieve it. Because if we wanted to give everyone the Cadillac health insurance plan, it would be uh, 600 and something thousand dollars versus our three. And, and every year, every, every year, these increase. plans increase in cost, whether they're health or whatever they are. And the town just has the ability to absorb that cost and further puts other people at disadvantage. Well, the but but it's also and a lot also a loss of insurance, and it's just right. People go where it doesn't take a rocket scientist. People go where the most money is, most benefits. That's what they do. So you, you know, it, everybody does that. Human nature. I mean, but how far are you going to keep going, and how do you compare that? Say, when are we offering a little too much because of nobody else around us is is offering that. And, and but that, everyone that, else around us. Well, that's what you're saying. We're not there. We're right there. You have to look at municipality uh, versus municipality. If I may, Dennis had his hand up. We, uh, these are all good points. We'll be here till midnight discussing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get paid enough to do this. Also, to adjourn. No. No. What's, what's on the we, table about what is recommended? So, right now, we are asking for $400,000. That would allow us the flexibility to offer either the $1,000 deductible plan and the $3,000 deductible plan and probably get a hybrid um, based on what people will choose. Again, this is a, a, our best estimate. We don't know. We have a lot of employees right now who don't take the town health insurance plan because they want to keep their family all on the, same, uh, on the same plan. We don't know how many of those employees are going to then come on to the town's plan because we're offering it. So what we did is a worst case scenario, if every single employee took the plan that they were eligible and they got onto the plan, this is what we expect to pay next year. So, so we're so we gonna oh no <laughs> so we're gonna offer something clean, so to speak. Correct. And see and see what happens, which is exactly what I do with uh -huh. myself. Uh -huh. It changes all the time, but you, you have to you have to offer something that's gonna yeah, hopefully apply something. to everybody. And and I see what you're doing is you're spreading the benefits out to all the employees, correct? As opposed to those on the left catalog, but it's still going to cost. Right? Right. And it gives the employees the option. It, it makes the employees be proactive in their own health insurance, and it makes them be proactive in their own health care to themselves. Um, it makes them say, "Okay, now I have a deductible. Where am I going to go to get these services done? Where am I going to, you know?" It puts things um, into perspective a little bit. Cindy. Question I have, you know, looking at this, because you said it wouldn't have gotten until July. So does this cost actually twice what we're, does that take that into account? No, because we're paying right now for the Cadillac. You're paying plan. right now for the, that's what for I the first to make sure months. that cost Correct. wouldn't be significantly more when we made the change. But okay, yes. that makes sense then. It all evens up. Yeah. Right now, if we didn't make any changes, if we, if we didn't even discuss making changes at all, if we just said we're going to stay with status quo, we're not going to change anything next year, our budget for this year's health insurance would be $362,000. So it would be a $40,000 increase no matter what, if no changes were made. Mm -hmm. We're asking okay. for a, uh, let's say 70, right? Is that 70? 77,000? Yeah, an $80,000 increase. So what's the, so the funded and the total expenditure is up by about forty-two thousand, forty-three thousand dollars. Um, why? Why is that? Vacancies. Pardon me. Vacancies. Vacancies. Right. We've had employees. We've had vacant positions in the the public works department. We've had vacant positions in the PD. How we've many also, vacant positions are there in the town? Uh, for full time for non union employees, there's one, and then we just hired two PD. We just hired two officers. We still have one vacancy in the PD downstairs. So you had a total of four that were vacant, and that, that represents that forty-two thousand dollars number. You got it. Four people represent forty-two thousand. Well, it depends on the plan they take. Again, so if you're looking at a union employee, their health insurance plan can be upwards of thirty thousand dollars. If you're looking for a uh, town hall employee or a non-union employee, 
their health insurance plan hovers around the fifteen sixteen thousand dollars a year. And, and again, when personnel changes, yep. we've had changeover, we've had turnover. Someone used to be not taking the health insurance, and now they are, or vice versa. We've had personnel changes that have got right. that as well. That's that question. Okay. All right. Move along. Um. Did you hand up there? No, I just. Union health insurance, that is the quote for next year without any changes. They are on their own health insurance plan that the CBA agreement provided one. Um, life insurance, we remain flat. Um, that hasn't changed significantly. Disability insurance, including the union. Again, the reason why we are down is because we had three vacancies pretty much for the union the whole time. And then also town hall. Dental plan non-union, we bump that up slightly based on the increases that they're proposing. And then FICA and Medicare are based on um, wages. Uh, FICA's up so much. The average person's only getting a 4% weight, weight increase. To be honest, Jim, I looked at that myself and I said, why is that so high? I don't know. That's how the calculation cal I don't know if prior to my time, I don't know if John only took a percentage of that with the assumption that there were going to be some vacancies or some turnovers, and also not every single line wage line is going to be exp expended 100%. You know, we that that factors in all the overtime that we have, all the on call that we have. You know, it factors in every single wage line being expended 100%, which we know is not necessarily right. Um, retirement, you're going to see um, for. Uh, Group two employees went down slightly. Group one employees went up slightly, um, but they pretty much washed themselves out. And again, we don't have any control over New Hampshire retirement. They set their rates. Uh, this is the first year um, of the full rate last year. It was six months at one rate, six months at another rate. So this will be the first year of uh, the 31.28% went down slightly to 33. And then unemployment, we received the Primex holiday, so that's not in there. Uh, workers' compensation, that is what Primex has quoted us for next year. And then the formal education for youth contract is at the 5,000. Um, I think Brian had a question. Yeah, Brian, what's the group one employee contribution? Uh, it's 11. 11% out of the person's paycheck? Correct. Oh, uh, seven, excuse me. Employers matching is uh so thirteen point five seven. So I mean point five three. So the whole package is like twenty one percent. Uh, for retirement. So how New Hampshire retirement system works is the only thing that goes into the employee specific pool is the uh deduction, the seven percent that comes out of the employee paycheck. pay paycheck. Right. The uh, percentage that the town pays goes into the greater pool to keep the New Hampshire retirement system running. So the contribution that the town makes on my behalf doesn't go into my retirement account. It goes into the pool to keep the whole retirement system running. But she gets access to that when she retires. Well, I get my retirement based on years of service right. and uh, average pay. Not based on what the town contributes. Not based on what the town contributes, correct. Just as a follow-up. Um, is it still about a billion dollar deficit in the retirement system projections? I don't know the exact figures. I know it fluctuates. Uh, we had, a, I think, not last year, but the year before, we they had a really great year on returns. Right. And so um, I don't know if it's still quite that high, but I do know that they were running a deficit for many uh, years. But I think they've turned, they've, uh, they've, Reevaluated their investment strategy and have seen greater returns in the past few years. Well, just as a little background information, I, I sat on the New Hampshire Retirement Board when we were looking at the billion dollar deficit projection because of the liability for people in place. And, you know, I think it's pretty easy to predict that the rates are going to be going, we're going to be going up as we go forward. Surprisingly, they went actually down this year, but I think it was based on the they had they had a, they had a good return for a few years. Like well. most of those. Yeah, but I, I don't disagree. I think I'm hoping that the retirement system is still there when I choose to retire. So that means that they spent it on something else. 
or somewhere. I think they have a greater number of employees leaving public service than they have employees coming into public service. It's it's based on the government, the gap accounting. You have to project out for what the liability would be if you had to pay it tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Oh, it, it is. Okay, yeah. that's like the post office. We some we have to do that as well. That's part of our auditing. We have to do it every two years. It's the post benefit, you know, liability that we have. Okay. Well, you brought up a good point. I'm stuck with it here. So you're you're really budgeting here for an Easter Sunday because you're budgeting to have um, a full roster of employees that are going to use all these benefits. You got it. Which the town never has. Well, but we have to gross appropriate. Or yeah, we yeah. Have to the town's growing. Cut us off. I'd to say. Yeah. Well, you're saying like you only have one, you're only missing, you're only short one town employee. Right, the well, two, one union employee and one non-union employee. Well, that's why it ends up at the bottom when you look at the grand totals, the expenditure versus the funded was a lot different. And then when you look at the new recommended versus the expenditure, it, it, it's totally, you know, a big number. And when I look at the top number again, we were talking about non-union versus union. So the amount of employees that you have, the two police officers represented three police officers, three that were missing. Mm -hmm. We were represented year. forty five thousand dollars worth of savings, and then our under underspent, and the other one was forty some odd thousand dollars underspent, and that that represented the one or two town employees. Two. Health insurance is not cheap. Ask people who don't get it, and they'll, they'll tell you. I mean, that they're the same way. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm dead, everything? Well, no, just, just to, this is, if you don't know, uh, what's the uh, percentage comparison between wages and health insurance? Is health insurance like 25%? If you take the overall cost of an employee. Um, you know I don't know that number right off the top of my head. I will say this right now with the current plan we're offering uh, for a single person plan, we're spending about $16,000 per employee. So some employees are making $50,000. Others are making upwards of $100,000. So I think it would depend on position specific. You take the highest one. I do know that I will say this we have employees that have chosen to take the two person plan or the family plan, and nearly all of their paycheck goes towards being able to provide the health insurance. I've yeah. heard that like years, a couple of years ago, too. The people are on a family plan, almost their whole pay was on a table. Right. They're essentially working for insurance. Right. Okay. That's been it. That's been it for personnel. Does anybody yeah. that? Anybody else have anything? I'd like to request a copy of the electric electricity contract, if I may. With our broker? Yeah. Yeah. Committee's all right with that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Sure. yeah. So could you could present that to the committee at our next meeting. Do that. And can we get a copy? Did you say that those copies are available yep. for we, Yes. If you can, we can get a copy of that at the next meeting. Of this? Yeah. 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 I guess the budget committee looks at all of these budgets. It appears that the biggest delta, the biggest change is in wages. It seems to be the prominent number that we look at. Is this town, or do we have a salary compression issue where long term employees' salaries have not kept pace with current higher salaries? That's a good question, Wayne. Um, I don't really know. We have an extremely outdated wage study back from 2012 that really has no relevance anymore. And a lot of our personnel policy references that. So that's a project for this year is to go through our personnel policy and kind of take out the references to that outdated policy. Um, but I think we are competitive. I think um, 
but I don't know the differential between a brand new employee coming on board versus a, a tenured employee or an employee with more longevity and how that factors. Now, O'Reilly had a lot for Rome. She's an example of a long term employee. And uh, for example, in our police department, we have 15, if you don't count the dispatch folks, we've got 15 police officers. Out of those 15, 11 of those police officers make more money than Carol O'Reilly does. They carry a gun. Huh? They carry a gun. They also have a union. Yeah. Yes. Right. So when you go to a grocery store, it's your absolute salary that, that is the issue. You know, if you're not in mm -hmm. and someone else is. But the same thing is when they go to my tax code. So. Yeah. <laughs> all, valid, all valid points. All, yeah, they're all, all valid, valid points. points. Yeah. Just think when we look at when we look at salaries, we have to look at the big picture of the town and the employees. And as there's a common word that we all know of salary compression and all these things, long term employee salaries just don't keep pace with current hires. So that's been that's and happened in that society. I don't know that, but I'm just trying to make it that something we should be looking at top down and keeping in our minds. The town doesn't typically lose any of its yeah. management positions because of compression. No, I think you have one of the strongest group of department heads that I a yeah. municipality can have. I mean, it makes my job, I don't want to say this out loud, but much easier knowing what that. You what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're saying? We could save a lot of money. I, just, I, say, I came from a community that had very green department heads that were all young, that were all great. They had one or two years under their belts and my day-to-day -day tasks in their department i was a lot more hands-on you have very strong departments nate chad tara i mean you have employees with longevity they love this community they you know it, it makes my job easier knowing that they do their job and they do it well mm -hmm. Here. motion to adjourn Paul made a motion. Second. Dennis, second. Any other discussion? Any other housekeeping? Herb, you mentioned something to me on the phone. Yeah, I just wonder if we wanted to. Years ago, we used to take two nights to do the budgets. Um, I don't know if we want to go back to that or if you want to start early on the budget on Tuesday. For our voting? Yeah. Um, we'll budget start at five. I think what I think what Herb was suggesting is that somehow we do it in two nights. We used them like 2014, 2015. Well, we, we don't have that option this year because yep. we go, the 30th is voting on the budget and February 1st is the public hearing. Yep. So we, we well, don't yep. have like, we this, this was our extra snow day. Right. Well, because we, we start at five o'clock. I'm okay with five. There's, I'm okay with five. You know, get a jump on the budgets. I'm good at five. What'd you say? I'm here at four. My oh. best view is bring a piece. Oh, I should ask me. I don't know. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Right. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Next five week. Five o'clock. Okay. All right. Uh, any further discussion? Okay. All in favor of the amendment, please raise your hands. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good so day. Here's my, here's my idea. 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 Here